So now we've got that candle burning quite well. It's time to put some chocolate chips into the spoon. So you want to have a, a decent amount, not too many, that they're going to fall out of course, but or to be too overloaded. And then the idea is to put them over the candle without getting them so close that you put the candle out, just so that enough heat starts to come onto the metal of the spoon. Now metal is a good conductor of heat, so it will heat up and probably though it won't conduct all the way down to your fingers, so your fingers should be fairly safe. Um, you wanna do this with a fairly old spoon because you will get a black mark from the carbon underneath the candle, which will wash off afterwards anyway, if you give it a good scrub. Anyway, so it's a case of waiting there. And also have ready on hand something to stir with. Now you could use a, a skewer, the blunt end of a skewer, or you could use a, an, another smaller spoon or even the other end of a spoon. But as it melts, you'll probably wanna give it a bit of a stir. Now just while that's melting, I'll just mention that you can use other candles. It doesn't have to be one of these tea candles, but don't choose one that's too low, of course, because you won't be able to get the spoon over enough of the heat to get the chocolate melting. But ones perhaps more like this are a good size and um, scented candles might be ones to avoid too. So if your solid chocolate chips look like they're not melting at all, you might need to bring them a little bit lower down to get a little bit more heat. But it can be a little bit deceptive too that chocolate chips look like they haven't melted until you start stirring them. As is the case with this, start to stir those now. You can start to see that the solid, a bit like the ice block, isn't it? The solid chocolate is gradually turning into a liquid. Now that's quite a change to have occurred, isn't it? Is this going to be a chemical change that's happening or is it just a physical change? Now also have ready, but not too close to the candle of course, a bit of paper, a bit of baking paper for you to put on your chocolate once you've finished. We'll just give that a, a little bit longer because we want all of the chocolate to have melted whilst we don't want it burnt. Now that's looking like it's all melted and Mr. Willy Wonka and his chocolate factory would be pretty proud, I think, of this little chocolate recipe we've got going here. So I'm going to move the candle to one side now and you could actually blow it out so that you know it's safe. But get your bit of baking paper there and with your skewer, see if you can make your initials. I'm going to go for a B to start with. And I might be able to get enough on this one. I might go for the other little spoon. I need to get an A for the other one. And then once I've got it in a bit of the shape, Spread it out a bit more with that skewer. There we go, there's the B for Bruce. And there's the A, which I could make touch I guess, but I think I'll just Go for a big chunky A here. Maybe go a little bit bigger and bring it across in the middle there. There's my big A. So there's my initials. And now my job is just going to be to wait. The old waiting game, important in life, important in science. If we give that 10 or 15 minutes to cool off. 